So we're going to start discussing rotation operators. So we want to show that rotating the spin up along x state for plus x of ket by 180 degrees about the z axis yields the spin down along x state. Okay, so before we begin this, just want you to keep in mind that if you want to rotate a vector now, you're going to need to use an operator. And we're going to denote that operator with a hat. So we have our hat, which is our operator, and we want to rotate by pi counterclockwise around the z axis here. So that's what that is saying. We're going to act this on the plus x um, cat. So before we begin, just want to point out so we can say e to the negative i over h bar of the generator of rotations times some uh, phi here, so just some angle, is equal to r hat. So that's very important. So e to the i over negative i over h bar times some generator of rotations times a parameter which is our phi, and our generator of rotations is the operator uh, right here. Okay, so this is equal to our operator of rotations. We want to rotate by pi counterclockwise around the z-axis, and we're just going to act this on x. Now recall, so x represented in the s Z basis, or the Z basis states is 1 over square root of 2 plus, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself here, okay, plus Z plus 1 over square root of 2 negative Z. Okay, so we're going to act this, and now we want to bring in the phase. So there's a relative phase and there's a general phase. So first we're going to get a relative phase here. So recall this relation. So this is going to be equal to e to the negative i pi over 2 divided by the square root of 2 plus z plus e to the i pi over 2 divided by the square root of 2 negative z. So these are relative phases with respect to each of the basis states of z here. And now where did this come from? So also I want you to understand so e to the negative i over h bar of jz, the generator of rotations for pi. Well this jz right here, or jz, however you say it, it's going to be h bar over 2, because um, that's what this value will return. So we have e to the negative i over h bar, h bar over 2, times pi. And now likewise, um, for the other case, we'll get a very similar result. Okay, so that is where this comes from, so h bars cancel, we have negative i pi over 2, negative i pi over 2, and over here, um, we don't have the negative in front, because we have e to the negative i h bar generator, jz times pi, which is equal to e to the negative i over h bar Except now, uh, for the z case, remember, so for positive z, we can get back positive h bar over 2, but for negative z, we get back negative h bar over 2. So we just plug that in here, what we actually would measure in the experiment, negative h bar over 2, and these negatives will cancel here. Um, h bar is cancel, so we'll just have a positive i over 2 pi. So that is where this comes from here. And this is where that comes from here. So this is the relative phase. But now we actually want to get our uh, overall phase, so we're going to factor out this term here. So we're going to bring that out front, negative i pi over 2, and 1 over the square root of 2 
plus z plus e to the i pi over the square root of 2, i pi square root of 2, negative z. Okay, so all we did is we factored this out front, leaving a 1 here, and when you pull out negative i pi over 2 from this term, that will just give you e to the i pi. Now recall, so we can simplify this more. So recall the complex plane where you have uh, imaginary, kind of like the y-axis, and you have the real axis here, kind of like the x-axis. And so this e to the i pi, what we're actually doing is we're going uh, pi degrees over here, and e to the i pi is equal to negative 1. So this is 1 here, you get negative 1 here, now if it was pi over 2, we would have an i here, and if you went around, so you had um, all the way around, or you went negative pi over 2, you'd end up down at negative i would be your answer. So I'll just recall this relation here, so this is the complex uh, representation, so e to the i pi is equal to pi degrees rotated counterclockwise in the complex plane, which is negative 1. Okay, so this then is e to the negative i pi over 2 times 1 over square root of 2 plus z plus a negative 1 over square root of 2 negative z. Okay, so this then is equal to e to the negative i pi over 2, and we've rotated now down to here. And so this is, might be a little uh, confusing at first, but just think about it like this. So we have x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis, and we are starting in plus x up here. So think about it. So we're starting facing this direction, like here, and we're rotating around the z-axis, so around this axis here, by pi. And if you're looking down on the top, so looking towards the origin, you're going to rotate counterclockwise. So looking down along your k-hat, your z-axis here, you're going to rotate by pi degrees, so pi degrees, so 90 degrees, counterclockwise, around this way. So, okay, just to be a little more clear, so we're over probably around here. We're going to rotate by 90 degrees, looking down on the z-axis, going counterclockwise, and that will give us negative x back. So that's all we're doing here. So I've introduced a, a convenient way to take a vector, and we're going to rotate that vector now to some other, um, other state or some other direction. And that's all we're doing, but in order to do that, we needed to introduce these phase. So in here, we have our uh, phase, but out here we have our overall phase. So here's our relative phase inside, our relative phase, but our overall phase doesn't really matter. And if you really want to get technical, so negative pi over 2, going negative pi over 2, you get negative i back, negative x. But that doesn't matter. The book just ends here. Okay, thank you for watching and have an excellent day.